Hey everyone, I'm really excited for today's video because I'm going to be taking you through one of my stocks that pays me over $1,000 a year of dividends. Before getting into this one, if you like this type of content, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. But as you can tell, the stock that I'm going to be talking about today is a Revenue Royalties Income Fund. a is currently trading at $34. If you look at my portfolio here, I'm actually down about 5% on the name overall. But I've been building this position up pretty aggressively throughout the first half of 2023. I have 525 shares, and I'll show you the math a bit later, but when I multiply that by my annual and monthly dividends that I get from this company, it equates to just over about a thousand bucks. You see the dividend yield here, so you can do some quick math if you want. But this one's trading at about 16 times a price to earnings multiple. Very asset-like business given that it's just a 3% royalty off the top line of a &W. The market cap of this one's under $600 million, but once again, that's not system-wide value. It's really just the, the royalty fund, and I'll explain throughout this video why I like this model as well. But before getting a bit deeper into the company, I'm just going to share the five-year outlook on this company. This company over... Um, the early 2010s to, to mid 2010s was going up pretty dramatically in price. It's really stabilized here. If you look over the last five years, obviously they had um, a big impact from COVID that they bounced back from. But even in 2019, the stock was trading at $46 a share. With that being said, the current revenue income that this company generates outpaces what was being generated in 2019. The dividends outpaced what was being generated in 2019. So I feel like at these levels, given um, the continued growth of the royalty fund and, and restaurant openings, that this is a lot more of a, a reasonably priced royalty fund to own than it once was when it was anticipated to be a very fast growing business. I remember this company used to trade for 20, 25 times. Now we're down to about 16 times on uh, trailing earnings. So just a bit of background on a &W Royalty before going into why I like this stock so much. a &W is the second largest uh, quick service restaurant burger chain in Canada. They have over a thousand restaurants. You can kind of see how they're geographically split up too, which I really like. Um, while lots of restaurants or lots of businesses in Canada are super, super heavily concentrated around uh, kind of Vancouver, Toronto. Uh, you can see here that they have pretty good um, glo uh, global, countrywide presence. They have a couple hundred stores um, out here in, I believe, Alberta, if my geography is correct. A couple hundred stores in BC, 300 in Toronto, so still covering Toronto, um, but 200 in Quebec, and they even have, you know, 70, 75 or so. Um, closer to 70 out east, um, which is rare to get some of that exposure uh, as well. And then in, in, in the mid provinces here, another hundred. So I like how they're geographically diversified across Canada. Looking at their restaurant store growth, you can see here at the end of 2022, they had over a thousand restaurants. And I just love how um, they don't move overly fast, but they've been growing restaurant count by a couple percent every year. And you can see it over time how much that compounds and and grows even over the last 10 years they went from 760 restaurants up almost 50 percent to a thousand to 1015 or more than that uh, now that we're um, near and closer to the end of 2023 so this business has continued to grow restaurant count for over 20 years just goes to show um, the the momentum and and the equity they have with canadian consumers I just want to take you guys through the different types of restaurants they have. So they have just over a thousand restaurants, 600 of those restaurants are freestanding and essentially every single one of those has a drive through. So I feel like these are really well positioned businesses that I'm going to continue to um, receive royalties from and, and they're going to continue to be very productive. Um, this is kind of um, the area that more and more QSR companies are trying to increase their exposure to as opposed to other types of outlets like uh, food courts and stuff like that. Freestanding restaurants with drive throughs um, tend to be the most productive options. So looking here, we have about 600 of these, so about 60% of the restaurant mix. Really like to see that. Continuing to go down, they have about 170 locations. 
um, that are convenience locations. So those appear to be um, like attached to gas stations or other things on highways, stuff like that. Um, and I think those are good businesses as well. We have lots of people traveling, lots of people um, using the highway system in Canada um, for weekend trips for um, cross province travel. And these are situated mostly on the highway. So people stop for lunch, get a bite to eat, get back on the highway. Um, so I really don't mind having about 17, 15, 16, 17 percent of the restaurant count here as well. Next, this is what they've been growing, trying to grow more over the last couple of years um, is their urban locations is what they call them. But they're really these small um, downtown locations in, in major cities. So they've got an almost 10% of their business in these restaurants now. I think this is an area that's continuing to grow for them. I remember a couple of years ago, I think it was closer to 50 or 60. Um, so this is where lots of the growth's coming from. Um, and I also like this exposure. So 10% here, 17% on the highway system, and then 60% freestanding um, is the majority of the business. This is the, the area that um, I think they are trying to mix away from, which is shopping centers, very competitive um, business to be in the shopping centers, also declining foot traffic in lots of these shopping centers across Canada. So this is probably um, from a store mix standpoint, what is least attractive. They are in 177 shopping centers in Canada. Um, so these are the stores that hopefully um, still perform well and, and still provide a good option, but really um, more excited about the growth on urban locations and, and freestanding locations um, for the future here. At the end of the day, when you buy shares of the ANW uh, Revenue Royalty Income Fund though, each of these locations are pretty much a profit center. Every time anyone orders um, a meal at, at A&W, any one of these thousand locations, you're getting a tiny bit of money, even if it's a fraction of a cent, in your pocket at the end of the month. So um, every time you see someone ordering food at one of these restaurants, you know there's not a bunch of costs that you have to offset before you get your dividend income. It's really just top line royalty income flowing into this company and then directly out to you with the exception of just some admin costs. So I really like that model, how it's asset light in nature. Looking at um, the franchise base of this company, it's interesting to see the vast majority of locations are owned by um, not even one-off franchisees. They're owned by um, companies or franchisees that have built big businesses around a &W that have five plus locations. I view this as a plus. You have less quote unquote amateur operators. People who have been successful in the past operating a &Ws are the ones that continue to get more and more a and So you know they know what they're doing. They can reapply best practices across their business. Um, and it just really speaks to a successful business model that a and W is offering these franchisees that lots of them are continuing to open more and more. And at the end of the day, a and W having a larger presence, a and W having more stores means more profit centers that are going to be winning people's purchases in different geographies across the country on a day-to-day -day basis. More money in your pocket as a owner of the a and W trademark uh, and the royalty fund. So um, I think this is. Uh, it's really interesting. I think it's a really good um, soundbite that they share with investors here. Looking at their recent quarter, so they just reported earnings. Um, they were so so, you know, increased uh, royalty income by 4.8% in Q2, so not bad. 6.4% up year to date. Um, lots of that, about half of that, it looks like, give or take, was driven by new store openings because under that you see same store sales was about two and a half percent in the quarter four percent on the year um we're in an inflationary environment so another thing i really like about uh, royalty funds is at the end of the day you're not paying for the labor you're not paying for the increased cost of food you're just getting a slice off the top so as inflation occurs and prices has to go up to accommodate for labor, rent increases, cost of goods increases. None of that really matters to you. As long as um, the consumer can swallow those price increases, they continue ordering um, similar amount of output, 
uh, you're going to be making more money on those higher prices. Um, so just another benefit of owning uh, a royalty fund. And seeing how these sales increases over time um, impact your um, dividends and, and your investment, I thought it would be interesting to just show, um, despite having a starting yield of 5% plus on this company, um, one of the reasons that I like it is because they've been able to grow their dividend over time. So you see here, 10 years ago, this company was paying 11.7 cents. And as I click through here, you can kind of just see over time, they slowly increase the dividend from 11.7 to 12.1 to 12.5, continuing through to 2016, 12.5, 13, 13.3, 2017, 13.3 to 13.6. And you can kind of just see it continuing to go up almost year over year. I feel like it was a bit of a disruption during COVID here. Yeah, they went down, um, but then immediately uh, or relatively soon after, they got it back up to 15 and a half cents. Last year, they increased um, from, or they went from 15 and a half cents to 16 cents. And so far this year, they've been doing that 16 cents with that three, four percent increase in same store sales growth this year. I fully anticipate later this year they're going to go 16 to 16 and a half cents. So it's not a huge dividend increase, but you're getting a great starting yield of 5% plus, and you're getting some inflation hedge too with that 2 3% dividend increase on an annual basis. So I thought it'd be interesting to just look at um, some compounding of, of this company and, and how they uh, pay me $1,000 a year for starters, and then how I can play that over time if I wanted to reinvest my dividends. So just going to zoom in here and, and see that the 525 shares, if I multiply it by that 16 cents a share that you just saw on the prior dividend slide a month, I'm getting $84 a month in dividends just from my a and um, royalty income fund shares. So that's really helpful every month. I get 84 bucks uh, to you know invest across my portfolio in whatever stocks or investments I feel um, like I should be making that month. Uh, just really helps with cash flow along with all the other dividends that I have coming in. When I multiply that by 12, as I was saying at the beginning of the video, it equates to over a thousand dollars a year of income just from this one position. I feel like this is a pretty safe position in my opinion. It has the history of actually growing over time. If I wasn't to buy more shares, I feel like three, four years from now, um, my dividend per year would be. 10% higher probably, a couple percent growth a year, and I'd be making 1100 per uh, year in, in dividends. I also feel like it's pretty defensive business. Like if the economy goes down or we go into a recession, is quick service restaurants really going to decline that much? There may be some people that don't eat out as much. They're not on the go as much um, and they make more food at home. I think there's also people that will trade down from sit down restaurants into these kinds of dining options as well. So I, I think they're pretty well um, covered in like mod moderately bad times. Um, so I feel pretty good about holding this investment. I feel like this thousand dollars a year is relatively safe and honestly probably has more upside than downside. And then just in the spirit of compounding and talking about dividends a lot on my channel, I just wanted to show how over four years, if they didn't even increase the dividend, but I reinvested dividends, and I'm assuming this is an attack sheltered account, like a TFSA or an RSP, just how much value um, you can generate by not taking out that thousand dollars a year, continuing to reinvest those dividends over four years. So you see here, you start at my current spot, what I just showed you, 525 shares paying you a thousand dollars a year. After year one, you'd be at 554 shares paying you a thousand sixty a year. After year two, at month 24, you'd be at 1120 um, a year in dividends. After year three, you'd be almost at $1,200, almost 100 bucks a month in dividends, up from 84 current day. And after year four, you'd be at 1250 bucks. So it goes to show after four years, if you just reinvest your dividends, you can increase your income in this security by 25%. And that's just all um, part of reinvesting and building your dividend snowball, compounding your portfolio by reinvesting the dividends that you get. 
Um, obviously, this is assuming you're doing it in a tax sheltered account, uh, but just wanted to share that there's lots of ways to grow your dividend income. One way is obviously buying companies that have fast dividend growth, um, like companies that increase their dividend every year for, for 50 years, like lots of the big banks, um, lots of the railway companies, stuff like that. That can definitely increase your dividend income year over year. But there's other ways on these higher dividend names that you don't even need to count on dividend growth as long as you feel like the dividend stable. Just reinvesting dividends can usually do the job. You're pretty much guaranteeing yourself um, a 5% dividend per year increase um, by reinvesting a 5% starting yield. So that's just what I wanted to share in this video. I really do like um, this stock. I will continue to evaluate whether it makes sense to buy more of it in the future. For now, I'm just taking my $85 a month, give or take, um, as I just built this up into a pretty big position for myself pretty quickly. So I'm gonna, gonna, gonna let it breathe a bit unless it continues to go down um, and just take that $85 a month, invest it in other areas of my portfolio to grow my dividend income on a monthly basis in other ways. So thank you guys for watching this video. Not too many people make it to the end of my video. So if you did, please let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, once again, would love if you give the video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel reach more people. And I will see you guys in the next one.